Hi everyone, it's Yanis here. We all want to be successful in different areas of our life, be it the business, relationship or our physical fitness. And one of our biggest enemies is failure. People tend to associate the failure with something bad. If you didn't win the competition, then you failed. Or if your business is not profitable, then you again failed. Today, we will take a look at black box thinking by Matthew Said, and it will completely change your attitude to failure. Here are six things that you can learn from black box thinking about failure. Number one, why people treat failure as bad. Children have hard time admitting their mistakes. Even if you caught them drawing on the walls and asked them if they did it, they would probably say no. But are we grown-ups so much different? Not really. We all have hard time admitting our mistakes because admitting our mistakes compromises our self-esteem. So it turns out that the hard part is not the fact that we made the mistake in the first place, but the fact that we have to admit it. People place huge value on their social interactions and status. Admitting to your social circle that you have made a mistake is not an easy thing. And then someone from the group will always be smartest and add, I told you this was not going to work, but you didn't listen to me. You have to choose your social circle carefully, so you don't have people who bring you down. But instead, you have people around you who support you and encourage you to do more. Number two, failure is indication to move in the right direction. Imagine, what would life be without the feedback? Well, we would be all probably doing the wrong things. If you're a content creator, then how can you improve if you don't get any feedback? Or if you're an athlete and never participate in competitions, then how you will know how you stack against other athletes? If you create content and get negative feedback on your latest content piece, then you can use that feedback to understand what went wrong. Is the topic not relevant to your target audience? Or maybe you just rushed and quality of the content has slipped? Your audience will pick up on those things. And as a content creator, this kind of a feedback is critical for your future growth. As an athlete, I can eat well and train hard, but that alone is not a real indication in how good form I am at the moment. To find out how I stack up against other athletes, I have to participate in a competition. And even if I lose, at least I will know that I have to step up my game. Without the feedback, we don't know if we are doing the right thing or going in the right direction. And therefore, we need the feedback no matter if it's good or bad. Number three, if you can't admit your mistakes, then you will never progress. It is often obvious when someone succeeds or fails. Plane lands successfully or crashes. Patient survives or dies. But it's not always obvious if the change in action would lead to change in outcome. Would the patient have survived if treated differently? Would plane have crashed if landed elsewhere? It is exactly this unclarity that makes it so easy to shrink responsibility from mistakes. But if you don't admit your mistakes, then how you're going to learn how to do better next time? In medical profession, mistakes are so unacceptable that doctors and nurses rarely admit making them. As a result, mistakes are repeated over and over again at the expense of patients' health. Studies estimate that at least 40,000 people die per year in America due to medical mistakes. Number four, subject your theories to failure, to learn and develop. You probably know how hard it is to change after you have used to do the things in a particular way. Imagine that you're selling products online. In order to drive sales, you create content for Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest. One week, you post more content on Facebook and you notice the spike in the sales. You instantly assume that creating more content for Facebook is beneficial. Therefore, you increase your content production, particularly on Facebook platform, thinking that this will maintain the increased sales. Few weeks later, the online product sales are back to where they were before, and you're sitting confused about what is going on. Now, the spike in the sales could be related to upcoming holiday season or your content piece was promoted by other big channel. So you have to look into the data and measure your results that you're getting. Otherwise, you might get a wrong impression. Number five, failure inspires solutions. Failure can be annoying, but sometimes when you figure out the problem, new products and services are born. 
Think about ATM for example. One day, John Shepard Barron forgot to go to the bank and get the cash. So he failed at having cash when he needed it. But through his failure, a new solution arose. A money dispensing machine that would work when banks are closed. Another way to use failure to succeed is to fail until you arrive at the best solution and that will be ultimately the success. A company had an issue with their machines clogging up the nozzles and they wanted to invest in developing new nozzles that wouldn't clog up. First, company turned to team of mathematicians to calculate the measurements of perfect nozzle, the length, the angles and everything else. When it came to testing, the new perfectly designed nozzle didn't show any noticeable improvement and was still clogging up. After this attempt failed, they turned to another team that employed completely different approach. Instead of trying to design a perfect nozzle, they were willing to fail. So they designed 10 nozzles and tested them all. All nozzles failed, but one was showing better performance than others. They took best performing nozzle and designed 10 variations. Again, they tested them all and took best performing one and designed another 10 variations. They repeated this process over and over and after 449 prototypes, they arrived at the nozzle that won't clog up. They basically failed their way to the success. Number six, you have to embrace failure. Failure is not just something you have to learn to live with. You should actually embrace failure in certain ways. Would you rather do something and fail or not do at all? I know that I will go for the first option every time. I would rather start a business and fail than ask myself question 10 years later. What would have happened if 10 years ago I took a risk and started my own business? You have to develop new relationship with failure if you want to become successful and I think that this book shows a great perspective. Not just how failure is not bad, but how you can use it to build your own success. If you want to manage your time better, have more structure in your life and achieve your goals, make sure you check out my time planning application. You can set goals and track progress towards them create time blocks and build your own daily structure, as well as log your time and measure your performance. Best of all, it's totally free. So press here to check it out right now. I'm working on new videos every day. So be sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next episode.